Numbers, numbers, numbers. Let's learn how to memorize numbers. Let me know how you're doing today. We're going to talk about memorizing numbers, the major system. I see David is here and I saw something from SDFG earlier. Good morning, everybody. If you're joining us and you want to learn how to memorize numbers quickly, let me know where you are in the chat. Let me know you're excited about numbers. Hit the thumbs up and let's get started with today's live stream. Memorizing numbers is one of the most amazing skills. It's so much fun. And um, there's some simple drills that you can do. And there's so many ways to apply memorizing numbers throughout your day that you really don't want to miss out on this skill. So we use a system called the major system. I usually prefer to call it the major method, but most people think of it as the major system. The reason why I call it a method is because it is a method by which you build your own system, but so many of us use it in such similar ways that it pretty much is is a system. And it looks like this that you see on the screen. And one of the things that I uh, find very interesting is how that some people just learn it so quickly and other people struggle and they spend a long time on it. So I want to solve the problem of needing to spend any amount of time on it at all. And I think I've come up with a solution. So I am excited about that. And one of the things that is really interesting is just how fast people can learn it. So Andy, he um, took it, uh, took the masterclass and was just zipping through this. And he said, just the other night, I was able to memorize 100 numbers total in about two hours. If you had asked me to do that before learning the techniques, I'd never be able to do that. Hell, I had to laugh at the thought, especially considering how hard it is to remember numbers in the first place. And so imagine that. He just gets into the training, boom, 100 numbers. And we see this quite a lot. So it's coming from this major system that you saw on the screen earlier. Also, Marno Herman, he did 1,200 digits of pi and recited it live. You can listen to that episode on the podcast. And if uh, <laughs> if I did things right, the links to some of these resources are in the description below. So um, please check those out. Uh, there's SDFG again, long time for me. Well, long time no see. Thank you for being here. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking, what's new and exciting for you. And follow up on these resources because they're really exciting. And listening to Marno recite 1,200 digits in such a quick period of time is very, very inspiring. Another success story that I absolutely love is uh, with uh, Jesse Villalobos. And he used all of this to get a raise and a promotion in very, very short order because he was able to ma master the major system. And so imagine who, who would like to get a raise and a promotion, I mean, who wouldn't, right? Who wouldn't want to be doing better in your work, you know, putting putting a little bit more f towards your retirement or whatever it is you want to do, um, getting more cool uh, stuff, more cool memory books, for example. Thanks, by the way, to everybody who's joined the Ultra Learning Giveaway Contest. Very, very excited about that, and I always appreciate it. Um, your interactivity. That uh, announcement will be coming up later this month, who the winners are. Keep keep the entries coming. Some really, really interesting things. And of course, a lot of people uh, need to memorize math and numbers and equations and so forth. So to help people out in that regard, we're going to talk about the major today. But if you really want a detailed and structured course, what I would suggest is that you get the new program, Major System Mastery, which we'll be sharing a fair amount about today. But this is a 12-day course that takes you through each and every digit step by step and gives you some interesting examples that I've never shared before that uh, enable you to learn it in a structured step-by-step -step fashion. So that's at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash MSM, the link is there for you, forward slash MSM, Major System Mastery. And then that will come out to you over 12 days and just walk you through each and every one uh, with simple assignments, 
simple places to post if you like. If you don't like to post, that's no problem. You can just do it solo. But uh, when we did the um, magnetic square programs, lots of people like to post. They learn from each other, which is uh, uh, really wonderful and amazing. And then uh, for those who you know like the Facebook kind of stuff, there's a Facebook group. And to make it even more uh, sweet for you, I've made the enhanced edition of how to learn and memorize math numbers, equations, and simple uh, arithmetic. So you can uh, get that at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash MSM, including the 12 day mini course. So what is this major that I'll be walking you through? It's just this system. And uh, we go into a little finer uh, detail than this, but how can you remember that zero is a soft C, S, or Z, or Z? You'll learn exactly how to do that. And I give you some unique association ideas that have never been shared before in this mini course. What I want to talk about today is not only this system, but also so many applications. But what it is, is it's a means of translating in your mind a, a, a basically any number has uh, consonants, and those consonants are translatable into words. And those words, if you follow particular rules, are very magnetic. And so then when you see numbers, you're able to memorize them. So the, the uh, Major System Mastery course also gives you some exercises as you go through it. So as you learn 0 and 0, 1, 2, you'll get a simple assignment that allows you to start to do the encoding to actually make the words. And there's very, very interesting things that start to happen because this is great brain exercise but you just need to commit this to memory. And it's one of those things where if you have to do rote learning, this is the one place that, you know, go ahead, rote learn it, but you don't have to. And that's what major system mastery is all about. So let me check in with the chat. Uh, SDFG says broke his index card, or broke out my index card and started to uh, memorize the major 00 to 99. Excellent, that's great to hear. Thumbs up to you. And if you're just joining us, hit that thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. Maricela is in the house. She has a meeting, but we'll come back soon. Awesome, good to see you. And uh, who here already knows the major? Let me know in the chat if you already know it or if you're watching the replay, welcome. And uh, let me know in the after party uh, of the discussion area if you already know it and uh, would love to hear more about your experiences with it. One of the things to understand here is that you don't have to use these consonants in this order, but most people I know do. And you also uh, could add different things. So for example, I don't, I don't use a hard G myself for seven. I just use a K, uh, but you can, um, you could just use a hard G and not use a K if you wanted. Uh, and you could arrange this around. So there's nothing stopping you from making zero F or V if that makes more sense to you. Now, one of the reasons why you wouldn't want to move that around is you would lose a lot of com camaraderie with your uh, fellow nemonists who are using it in this way. Uh, another reason why you might not want to move this around is because there are some interesting relationships here. So if you notice that zero is soft C, S or Z, that's a memory aid in and of itself for remembering these things, right? Because if you just pay attention to your mouth, zero, C, S, Z, S, S, it's all coming from the same part of the mouth, D, T, all coming from the same part of the mouth, right? So this really, really helps with your memory, but it's um, also just cool to notice that, right? Uh, six, Ch, J, soft G, George, Sh, all coming from the same basic relationship of the tongue in your mouth, F, V, B, P, and so on. So why? Well, we don't know <laughs> exactly. I don't think anybody knows. Nobody's told me a compelling story that says exactly why, but it appears to be thousands of years old with the Katapayadi, um, these kinds of relationships. So interesting, interesting, right? And um, we go through this again in the uh, in the Major System Mastery course. Shane is in the house from Houston, Texas. Great to see you, Shane. Thanks for saying hello. If you're just joining us, hit that thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. And that's the major system. And so once that you have it memorized, if you see a thing like 45, you're gonna have an, a word that you can make. And then that word is an image and you're able to do a lot of things when you can just look at something like 45 and memorize that it was 45. And then when you need it, you just go into your mind and you can call it back. And we'll talk about some applications. Now, some of you will already know some of these applications, but I'm hoping to surprise 
most of you with some ideas that you've never thought of before and you should be using and you can use just by memorizing this system and starting to practice it. So SDFG is already got this and is working on his 00 to 99, which is great to see. Who else already has the major system in your mind, ready to rock and roll? Let me know in the chat. Let me know that you're alive and kicking. Um, crickets are, are fun, but uh, you know, these sessions are always so much more interesting when people are active. And of course, being active on the replay discussion is wonderful as well. So let's talk about some bolt-on applications because a lot of people aren't doing these and they're really, really powerful to uh, add to your mix after you have this or if you already have it, then later in the game. So for example, you can have numbered memory palaces and you can use your major to make sure that you know the number of every station because you label it with an image, right? And that's very, very powerful to do. Now, are you gonna to wanna to do it all the time? No, of course not. But when it's needed and when it's useful, you can and will benefit a great deal from having numbered memory palace stations. Why? Because you're able to actually already have an image in place that helps you encode the new stuff that you want to memorize. So for example, working with the memorandum deck, it's powerful to know the number of every card because you have an image on that station in the memory palace. So David Jones says, I use an app called MSD. You pick your picture and word for each zero to 99, but it turns it into a game. And I think I got it, I think to 18 levels, made it easy to learn. Excellent, David, thanks for sharing that. People should check that out if they want. Now, uh, Apps are cool, but of course you 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 want to as uh, as David is basically saying is you want to get this system into your head. So the app isn't going to do the things for you at the end of the day. What you're going to need to do is have the system. So for some of the applications we're going to talk about today, you can memorize those numbers quickly. Cafone is here from Italy. Buongiorno. Uh, thank you for your videos. You say excellent, Cafone. Thank you for being here. Thanks for saying hello. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. Do you know the major? Haven't heard yet in the chat. Who here already knows the major? Uh, David has suggested that he does in that direction, as has SDFG, SDFG. Looking forward to hearing from you and saying hello. So numbered memory palaces is a bolt-on application. Absolutely wonderful to have that in your skill set. Unlocks so many things. We'll talk about some of the other things that it unlocks for you in a minute. But here's another thing. Number rhymes, ROA, is another system. It's not the major, but it's another number memory system. One is a gun, two is a shoe, three is a bee, four is a floor, etc. cetera. Um, four is a door. It can be many, many things, but you can also number your number rhymes. <laughs> Isn't that cool, right? So how does that work? Well, what if one is a gun wearing a tragedy mask because it's bolted on with your zero, zero to 99, whatever zero one is for you in your zero, zero to 99. What if two is a shoe is also a, can be a shoe that is being burned by the sun because you've got it bolted on. Now, this is really, really great brain exercise. It's a bit of a stretch and a challenge and it has interesting applications. Not only does it make all of your number rhymes that much more memorable, but then it gives you an opportunity to compound, to double down, to double down when you have your numbered memory palaces and so forth. So really cool application, but you gotta start with the major. So if you don't have the uh, major yet, make sure you get major system mastery at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash MSM. And um, I'll pop that link in the chat for you so you can just clickety click it and uh, check it out for yourself. Powerful, powerful material. Now you can also have a numbered peg list. So for example, you can um, have A, right, which would be an Apple or something like that. And uh, it could be an Android phone. It could be an Android like data. And uh, data shows up in the Major System Mastery course, by the way, uh, which comes with an ebook and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can have that. And so, you know, two can be your B, and then you can have number rhymes bolted onto that. Super powerful, very, very rigorous, maybe a bit too robust than most people need. But this isn't about what you need. This is also about constant improvement constant brain exercise, constant memory exercise that stretches your skills so that you grow over time, right? And you add on and you add on and you add on. And 
even if you just know about these possibilities, you can grow uh, because you have more space in your mind to work with where you're at and go, oh, there's the forward journey that I want to travel. It's so much fun. All right. So Reclaiming Life is in the house. Hello, friends, family, visitors, and anyone interested in the memory traditions. Excellent. Always good to see you. John Eric is here. Good to see you, John. Thanks, as always, for your support. Wonderful, wonderful to have you here. Checking in from Grand Point, home for the elderly. Just dropped my mom off back at the nursing home. Major system is cool. One teacher really helped me lock it down when he told me, for example, the letter 45 just go, and the word rail automatically come to mind. Yeah, yeah, rail is uh, awesome dinner rolls, uh, so forth. I use rail, but not just any rail. So one of the things you learn is to not just have la-di-da words, but to move it towards specificity. So instead of um, rail, you can have, remember Superman, the first Superman movie, the Richard Donner film, where Superman bends up the, the railway track, right? So whenever I want to memorize certain things, like for example, the position of six of diamonds in a, in a particular stack, the 45th card, can have Superman bending the rail around who? Who can guess what my six of diamonds might be? Let me know in the chat if you have a guess what my six of diamonds might be. All right, it might surprise you. Uh, Austin is here from Montana. Excellent, excellent. Go move into Montana soon. Yeah, I like that song. Every time you're here, I think of Frank Zappa. Gonna be a mental toss fly coon. <laughs> Such a good one. Um, all right. Let me know, too, if you have the major already under your belt. You know, you might want to get the Major System Mastery course anyway because of the mnemonic examples I share in that. So please uh, avail yourself if you want. It's a 12-day course that comes with the enhanced ebook of my international best-selling book on memorizing numbers and equations and simple arithmetic. So what else do we have here? for bolt-on applications. Well, before we get into that, let me know in the chat where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. Hit that thumbs up. And one of the, ooh, look at that. We got chaos, chaos, chaos. You can also, as already has come up, because we got some real pros in the Memory Palace today, excellent, excellent, is the 00 to 99 PAO. So what is that? Well, once you have the major system on the go, what you do is you start to build a, previ a previously built uh, set of images for every two-digit combination from 00 to 99. And so I mentioned the tragedy mask already today. So that's 01. Why? Because 0 is uh, potentially an S and 1 is a D or T. So that makes words sad. And so then we, I just see this tragedy mask. Push it to make it a bit more specific. It's the tragedy mask that William Shatner wore when he played Oedipus in the video movie production of Oedipus Rex. Very good production, actually. And then all the way up to 99. So what's 99? The Pope. Any Pope? No. The very specific Pope by the Ghost Band. You know, Ghost. Uh, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> music. And uh, he's often dressed up like a pope. So that's very, very specific. Why is it pope? Because nine can be a B or P. So very, very powerful. Bad Ba, long time no C in the memory palace. Good to have you here from Virginia. Excellent. David is in the house in Chicago. Good to see you, David. Thanks for being here. Who here has a full 00 to 99 PAO? We, so, we haven't heard many people saying, yes, I have a major system. So who has a uh, a 00 to 99 PAO, which would assume you have some kind of major, but you don't have to build your 00 to 99 from the PAO. You could build it from a Dominic system, for example. Um, potentially, you could just build it without any system whatsoever. Not necessarily recommended, uh, but you could. Uh, Bad Boss says, I think of the artist, how do you say that? Chardet? Is that how you pronounce her name? The 01. Um, I've never really known how you pronounce her name. If memory serves, she sang Smooth Operator, right? Or she sings a version of it. In any case, um, Bad Boss says, I have a, zero, a full 0, 1 to 100 major system. You taught me. Excellent. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you for letting me know about that. That's that's just great. And it's very, very, um, very, very powerful to do. And it's great brain exercise, too. It just keeps you so sharp. And it's fun. And uh, Fortnite is in the house, up to 45 right now. Excellent, Fortnite. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining me. And thanks for joining us 
in the Magnetic Murray Method community. Hit that thumbs up if you're just joining us. And um, one, of the, one of the other things you can do, oh, Danny is here. He has a 00 to 99 PAO, and it's great. Excellent, excellent. Thanks for letting us know. And uh, look forward to your continued thought carrying on. You can use it for, for, for professional information. So there's a number of ways to use it for professional information. For example, computer programming, internal codes, product numbers. Um, you can use it for upcoming dates, which would involve your prospective memory. This is one thing where a lot of people need a lot of help. They need to improve their prospective memory. They need to remember what's coming. And uh, I do too. Like There's so many opportunities where an upcoming appointment, it's so easy to just think, oh, that's on the 12th. You make your image for the 12th. 2 p.m. I use I use the 24 hour clock, so 14. Make an image for that. Bang presto! You you've now laid some perspective memory because you've encoded on your mnemonic calendar a date to come, and it really really helps. You get great memory exercise, great brain exercise, but also move yourself towards better remembering of things in the future. So that makes you a better professional, right? Because you're organized, you're the go-to person who remembers what's coming up. And imagine, you know, whatever profession you're in, your company probably has revenue forecasts, it probably has charts and graphs, and so on. And, you know, there's oodles and oodles of ways that you could distinguish yourself as the go-to person in your company who knows what's going on, when it's due, what impact it's going to have on the company, because you've memorize some of the forecasts, some of the goals of the company, some of the milestones along the way. And uh, you will definitely, like Jesse Villalobos, be getting a raise and a promotion if you're that person in your company. So this is very, very important. So, you know, lots and lots of things to do. And one of the things that's so obvious to me is that People who get ahead are the ones who know what's going on. They know they know the plot of the company they're working for. And then they go to the boss and they say, hey, I know about the 80-20 rule. How can I make sure that I'm in that 20% that's producing 80% of the results for this company so that I'm the asset, you know? And, uh, man, so many bosses out there, so many managers would be blown away to have people on their team with the wherewithal to ask those questions rather than, oh, I'm just here for a paycheck kind of people, um, which no boss, uh, you know, is going to advance very fast, very far. Although, you know, I don't know. I don't want to generalize. Uh, but we know that there's just a huge amount of opportunity out there for people who will just equip themselves with this skill. And the major is a way of managing all that simple, easy, effective Use memory palaces in combination with this, and you can be that go-to person who gets the raises and so forth. Heck, you might even end up owning the company. Reclaiming Life says, I have both, but keep updating and changing my 00 to 99 when I think of things I like more or work better. Excellent. That's a great point. Thanks for raising that. One of the things you will do is evolve it, change it over time. You know, I, I've had Alan Ladd for a long time with a latte uh, for 51, and uh, then Alita Battle Angel comes out. Actually, it was Lee Coxon, who is in the Magnetic Mary Method Mastermind, who uh, mentioned Alita. And I was like, yeah, you're right. That's a great idea. So new things will come out. New movies will come out. And you'll be like, wow, that's amazing um, to uh, add that on. David says, I have a zero, zero, 0 to 999 major, a PAO for just card memorization. Okay, so that's that's two separate PAOs. Wow, and a 0999 major, awesome. So yeah, you can also build into three, four digits and so forth, um, potentially more. Cool, and in uh, Major System Mastery, we'll talk about some of those uh, those things that you can do with some drills. Uh, so David's getting some comments and questions here. Uh, Reclaiming Life says, David, I've just been thinking quite a bit about extending mine to three digits as well. Do you find that it is uh, significantly more effective SDFG wants to know, is the major just the zero to nine individual? Great, great. Um, yeah, so major, the major system is zero to nine, having a consonant for all of those. Why must it be a consonant? Because you need to make words. You need to put vowels in between those words. If you build it out of vowels, you're going to have a hard time making words because there aren't a heck of a lot of words that start and end with consonant or vowels. But yeah, maybe you can. I don't know. I wouldn't do it. Um, if you, if, a lot of people get stuck on the why is it this way. And if you can just let go of the why and just learn it, then what's going to happen is 
you'll be able to just use it, right? Imagine asking, well, why is there only one shoelace in my left shoe, <laughs> right? And never learning to tie your shoes because you can't solve that fundamental mystery, which isn't a mystery at all, really. But, you know, as a kid, you might be curious. You know, there's a hole on either side or holes on either side of my shoe. So why isn't there two strings here instead of one? Uh, you know, you get lost in that kind of why stuff. You might never learn to tie your shoes. Same thing with the major. We don't really know why. We can speculate. Yes, there's some sort of relationship between some of the sounds in your mouth that has gone back for thousands of years uh, in ancient India. Um, probably those dudes had some combination of experimentation and serendipity and so forth that just led them to make these discoveries. So if we just, you know, accept it for what it is, just learn it, get past that, boom, amazing things happen. And so to answer your question, SDFG, zero to nine is the major system as zero, zero to 99 is not necessarily built from the major, but I've built mine from the major. And I think it's much easier and much more profound because at the end of the day, you can track back. And this is where a why can be very, very useful. It's like, well, if you, if you had a 54 or you had a 35 or whatever, and you're thinking you couldn't remember exactly what it was and you, you, you get your, oh, it's a mailman. Okay. So we got Mr. McFeely here. Oh, right. So M and L 35, like you get that back. Um, it's just, it's non-arbitrary at that level. So the major system itself may be arbitrary, but the actual words become non-arbitrary because there's a reason why that you chose that word based on the major. And then if you make it magnetic by actually having a specific thing, you, you might use the word male, but you turn it to mailman, a mailman that you spend some time with, like Mr. McFeely. Is that his name? Mr. McFeely? I think so. From uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And you'll get oddities like that. You'll, you'll think, oh, was that his name? <laughs> you know, whatever. But nonetheless, you know, there was a mailman in that movie. And then, you know, you, you can just figure it out. Male M is three, uh, five is L. So that must be what the number was. And it's, it's, you don't get into arguments with yourself because you know this system. And the system is very, very fun to have in your mind. And its application becomes more powerful when you have it as a 00, zero to 99, but you don't necessarily need to. And I don't always use a 00, zero to 99. Sometimes I will look at numbers and I will just make new words on the fly. Uh, but I'll apply that principle most of the time to say, okay, so what are we going to put there? The, the, the thing is, is that one is the most dangerous number, right? So you want multiple systems, which is why I started today's presentation with a lot of the bolt-on uh, activities that you can do. You can add number systems to peg words uh, based on the alphabet. You can add number systems to rhyme uh, number systems. You can add number systems to your major, uh, to your uh, memory palace. You can have more than one zero zero to 99, you can, you, et cetera. It's just endless what you can do. Uh, I always laugh at these people who say, oh, there's nothing new in memory techniques. Nonsense. <laughs> no, no, and a thousand times no. There's so much new stuff yet to come, and there always will be. And it, uh, there's also just so many people for whom it is new. And because they're a new generation living in new times with new technology, they see things differently, and you can learn so much. Likewise with the past. There's so many ways to pick up a book by Bruno, think through some of the new things like the shadow, for example, which is yet another system. And uh, think through Bruno through the lens of the shadow. What? I mean, it's just amazing what will unlock in your brain. The truth is, is that there's always new stuff every single minute. And if it's new to you, all the better. All right. If you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking, how things are going. And do you have a major system? So David shares that 51 is Larry David with a sewer lid. Amazing. I love that. So Larry David, if memory serves, he's a, a comedian, right? And I think he I think he did a lot of Seinfeld stuff is behind or a partner with Jerry Seinfeld on a lot of that. If I if I remember Fortnite says he can memorize a deck of cards in about 13 minutes now. Hem bang. Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. Wonderful. I remember back when it was 13 minutes for me as well. Uh, so amazing. Wonderful. Bad Ba has a 0, 0 to 100 PAO. Awesome. Congrats on that, Bad Ba. Excellent. Bebek is here from Nepal. Hello, Bebek. Thanks for saying hello all the way up in Nepal. David says to Reclaiming Life, I have 1,000 stock images that can be used anytime. 
The practice really helps refining skills. Took four months. Happy I did it. Wonderful, wonderful. JA is in the house. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Hello, hello. Yes, the major is very, very powerful. Good to see you. It's been a long time, my friend. Wonderful, wonderful to have you here. If you're just joining us, hit that thumbs up. And if you're watching the replay, get involved in the discussion below. Love to uh, hang out with you there after in the after show party. Um, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, in case you're, you're you're just here and you didn't hear the news about the new major system mastery mini course, go to magneticmarrymethod.com forward slash MSM and grab that course. It comes with the enhanced ebook uh, of memorizing numbers and arithmetic and simple equations and so forth. That has been an international bestseller Woo! for 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 it was it was high ranking book for quite some time uh, all those people who have been emailing me thank you very much for emailing about the new book a little bit of an announcement about that it does involve the major system in a very different way than you may have seen before or maybe not maybe you'll be aware of it uh, as an update i now have the penultimate draft back but maybe maybe it's not the penultimate draft it still needs proofreading and we're still working on how we're going to get the illustrations inside. But um, it's coming along. It's going to be great. And we're looking maybe at a March-April release. So thanks, everybody, who's continuing to ask about that. I really appreciate it. This book is hopefully magnum opus level uh, for me, anyway, in memory. And uh, it has uh, a twist, to say the least. And I don't think that I have my ego in the way when I say that there hasn't been anything quite like it before, but not in that bad way of breaking new ground with some wild experiment, but bringing together two things that used to be together in the ancient world, but have fallen apart. And now it's time for revival. So stay tuned for news about that. And Zephyr is here from Biloxi, Mississippi. He uses the major method in combination with mind palaces to memorize electrical theory. It works very well. Thank you for that, Zephyr Zeal. I love that name, Zephyr Zeal. Awesome. <laughs> and yeah, as we talked about already today, we can combine the major with memory palaces and mind palaces and so forth. And um, J.A. says, penultimate, woohoo, when will you pen the ultimate? Well, this is a draft, a penultimate draft, but the ultimate memory book, I'm hoping this will be the ultimate memory book. Now, it's not going to be my final memory book, but I think it's going to be the magnum opus. It'll be the one, right? So what I had in mind was, you know, there's an interesting thing. And um, uh, I was speaking with Braden Adams uh, on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. And we were talking about moonwalking with Einstein. And there's a really odd thing that I've noticed about moonwalking with Einstein. So I've been reading the, uh, or I have many times before, read the reviews of moonwalking with Einstein. And a lot of people have said, it doesn't really teach the memory techniques. And I'm just like, what? So many people have read this and they go and compete and they they win competitions or they do really well at competitions from the Moonwalking with Einstein book. So how can it be that there's this gap between people reading this book saying it doesn't have any memory techniques in it and then these people who use it to go and compete and they really don't do much at other study except for what's in Moonwalking with Einstein. This is a paradox that makes zero sense. And yet it makes complete sense. And here's why it makes sense. People are prepared at different times to see different things. You know, we often say those who have eyes to see and those who have ears to hear. Well, we mean that because your existing competence will lock you in a prison or set you free, right? And so this is the EEC principle. Expand your existing competence all the time because your existing competence is either a prison or a portal for freedom. And it can be both things at the same time. And so that I wanted to work with a bit in the new book. And so it builds on Moonwalk with Einstein. It builds on the memory code by Lynn Kelly. And fortunately, her memory craft came out while I was still working on the draft. So I was able to take some inspiration from that as well. And been able to build in some of the missing gaps, but serve a completely different demographic as well. And we'll see, we need to, um, we need to figure out, you know, how exactly all that's going to work. Look, there's a lot of whiz bang ninja market analysis stuff that you can do, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Doing a little bit of that. And um, uh, well, there's a few things that 
are a little bit premature to speak about, but one thing that's pretty cool is later this month, I'm going to meet with, uh, should I say who this is? Well, maybe, uh, maybe a, let me know in the chat if you really want some behind the scenes data here, some, some behind the scenes information. If we get enough, hell yes, I will, uh, I will let forth a little bit of this back end stuff, but I want to know that it's interesting to you. And if not, keep it to myself. All right. So let's check in with the chat. Speaking of chats, hit that thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. It almost starts to deteriorate. Is that so? Great, great. And towards the end of the semester, I got that right in class and the teacher couldn't believe I remembered that. Neither could I, <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the amazing thing, right? It's just like miracles on tap every day when you use these memory techniques. It's amazing. And uh, that's interesting that you use Lily because I still to this day use Lily for 55, uh, which I would also use for 5.5 if ever it came up. And um, uh, what can I say? Lily for me makes a lot of sense because I had a girlfriend who had a dog named Lily and I spent way too much time with that dog. I never really liked the dog, but um, it's very good. And then sort of 56 for a long time was leash and I still sometimes use a leash. And so it's kind of neat. You can sometimes have these little narratives going on through your 00 to 99 PAO, which is a lot of fun. Um, scientist Alif is in the house. Hello, Scientist Alif. Thanks for saying hello. Uh, but back to John Eric here. Uh, yeah, so I've had a lily too. Uh, and one of the things is, is a lot of people, they get hung up on, you know, what seems to be a limited amount of solutions, but actually there are a lot of solutions. Uh, and, and sometimes you end up using words that actually have more consonants than you need. So don't get hung up on that. You can manage this in your life. And, uh, uh, excuse me. Um, one of the things that you'll find is that your, your mind has a lot more space for contradictions than you would uh, think and you would imagine. So this is very, very powerful and uh, something to do is to just expand that existing competence, EEC, expand existing competence, because you're never going to experience the full miracle of what can happen if you don't, if you don't stretch. And we often call this in the magnetic memory of the world, the challenge frustration curve. All right. James is in the house. Good to see you, James. Thanks for being here. Moonwalking with Einstein is one of my go-to books. Good evening from Atlantic Canada. Indeed, good evening. And uh, thank you for being here as always. Thanks, especially James, for your great conversation about memory all these uh, last period of time. I guess it's got to be more than a year now. And uh, I always appreciate seeing your name and hearing from you. And I hope everything is good with you tonight in Atlantic Canada. Is Rex Murphy still on the air at all? Let me know. I haven't seen or heard his voice for a long time. And I think J.A. is in Canada too, if memory serves. J.A. says, those who say stuff like that about Moonwalking with Einstein seem to want a book of spoon feeding antithetical to learning mnemonic systems. Well, that's right. But J.A., in their defense, I've done a lot of market research, as they say, and I've called up Magnetic Memory Method people and uh, talked to them and done surveys and stuff. And a lot of people have said, if you could just spoon feed it to us. And so I thought of that and, you know, it'd be kind of cynical to call it that, but uh, I didn't call it the spoon feeding course, but I called it magnetic square and magnetic square has been wildly popular. And so that's what major system mastery is as well. It's not spoon feeding it to anybody. It's just, could, could, is it possible to actually break this down? So if you'd like to get major system mastery, it comes with the enhanced ebook on math and numbers and equations. So go to magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash MSM, and you'll get a 12 day course that walks you through the major step by step, each consonant, and gives you a number of ways to think about it and encourages you you know, I even say in the course, stop reading now, do this yourself. And then I give you some examples, some ways to think about it, to really stretch. And it is step by step. And uh, I mean, you're right in your criticism, J.A. Spoon feeding is not good. But I changed my attitude a little bit. And I just thought, what if we could? How could we legitimately break things down, put it into bite-sized chunks, and just serve the world the way that it is? So instead of griping and criticizing it all the time, which... I'm sometimes happy to do, but, <laughs> you know, well, how about we just serve those people who need that help and do it in a way that is authentic and true to the tradition? Is it possible to do so? We don't have to be stubborn Bruno every day, uh, even though he was not wrong 
to be stubborn in that way. Um, so anyway, that's my take, right or wrong. And I think it's more right than wrong. And we're never going to get it perfect because it's already perfect just the way that it is, right? If we allow ourselves to just accept the world the way that it is and meet it halfway. So that's part of uh, the genesis of these little mini courses. And uh, it's been working great. All right. So Alvin is here. Good to see you, Alvin. If you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. James is not sure about Rex Murphy, but J.A. has an LOL to Rex. So <laughs> if you were to do your, your 00 to 99, who can guess where uh, Rex Murphy might stand? Or in an alphabet list, he's obviously a great R or an M, right? He's so amazing. <laughs> Alvin says, glad to learn about mnemonics all the way from Africa. Excellent. Thanks for joining us all the way from Africa. Love that. I love that people from Africa are getting on the internet. I hope that they will give you guys some nuclear power and give you more internet because what a party we're going to have when all of Africa joins us. Isn't that going to be amazing? And just think of all the places that have yet to be patched in. Wow. We're, we, are, we are looking for a storm of memory students yet to come yet to come. All right. J.A. says, but you seem to start people off and give them stronger meat and drink. Many people like once and done and don't understand that learning is a continuum. That's why we must show up and serve them and teach them that, J.A., and I always appreciate your participation in the project to do so. Learning is a continuum indeed, and it's a huge part of the uh, of the magnetic Mary method world, right? Uh, it's got to be that way. It's got to be that way. You know, if we, if we don't at least make the best possible attempt, if we don't try, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to fail. And so we can't fail if we're at least making that attempt and to serve those people. And just because they are that way, you know, meat is a problem. Meat is a problem. People say, give me the meat, which, as we know, is meaningless edutainment, absurdly thriving, particularly on the Internet. What they what 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 people need and what they want are two different things. And so we gotta we gotta find our way we will we will help each other out humans have this unusual capacity to share things that are good and helpful and to protect each other from things that are poisonous but that has changed a little bit with the internet which this is your opportunity to hit the thumbs up to get involved in the discussion to share this around with people make sure when you sign for the up for the free course at magnetic forward slash yt you share it around i see people on twitter doing that which is wonderful and um very, very important to do so because so much of, you know, look, it used to be catching up with the Joneses. Now it's catching up with the Kardashians. Do we need so much sharing of that stuff? Yes. If you turn the Kardashians into numbers and vice versa, if you can use the Kardashians in your major, all the better. Go for it. Power to you. But if you're just passively consuming it, eh, that's not, not the greatest thing. So pop culture isn't the problem. It's what we do with the pop culture. And so you have a mnemonic feast in front of you if you start seeing the world as numbers, which we'll talk about. All right, so carrying on, what else can you do with major systems? Well, you can memorize page numbers as you're reading, right? So I still use bookmarks uh, from time to time, and I still also memorize the page numbers, but I don't always have bookmarks around. And so where was that page that I was just on? Oh, 29. Uh, where was that page? Oh, 77, 75, whatever the case is, 125. It's just so much fun. It's good to note it and just do a quick little brain exercise to be used in your major uh, or your 00 to 99. It's very, very powerful and important. Meet, masterful inquiring and thriving. Oh, I like that. Nice, nice, nice. Masterful inquiring is absolute thriving. Love that. Wonderful, wonderful. So... Yeah, meet and drink. Page numbers, just a simple thing to do. Just encode your page numbers as you're reading. And also, you know, dates, publications, uh, the date of the publication, the author, dates, details that come up in the book, you know, like facts that use numbers, distances, weights, prices, etc. One of the things that you want to do with um, the dates is when you pick up a book and you go, oh, so 1999, what movies came out that year? You start to build your magnetic imagery from the get-go so that you're able to learn very, very quickly. Um, 
because you already have some palette started. Even if you never end up using any of that, you, you still benefit from the exercise of doing it. It's kind of like a quick warm up. And you can just think of the memory palaces. So, you know, what movies did I see that year? Oh, that was Die Hard. Where did I see that? Oh, that theater could be a good little memory palace uh, and so on. Or you could just think that year, where did you live? Where did you travel, etc. And you get so much out of that in terms of just developing the palette to work with when you read a book. SDFG, uh, SDFG says, I like the flow of creativity that comes when I practice. Amazing. Yeah, it's exactly that. Incidentally, one of the things that you can do is just do little small memorization drills before you do bigger creative exercises. It warms you up and uh, it's very good to get warmed up before you do anything. Um, very, very important. Month Entertainment is in the house. Wonderful, wonderful. Good to see you as always. You had a lucid dream last night and reviewed your memory palaces in it. Awesome. That's great to hear. Hen bam. I love that. Great. Thanks for sharing that. And um, wonderful. So what were you studying that you reviewed in your memory palaces? That's awesome. Total control. Total control. SDFG says, I noticed that the hot shots at work spout jargon by memory. Well... I'm not sure where you're going with that, but if you mean that there's some sort of ego trips that come from people with really good memory or uh, something along those lines, that can happen. But we don't have to be that way. We can be kind and gentle and uh, a little bit um, take the higher ground on things. Uh, and, you know, the, the other thing, too, is you must. You must be humble, and that's really, really important because you never know when you might make a mistake, right? And then you look like a complete moron if you... Um, are so certain. So some, you know, rhetorical strategies and tips around that just to keep yourself modest, or just to simply say, you know, I'm not entirely 100% sure, but if memory serves, I think I, I think it will find that that was 1987 or whatever the case may be. That's just a, a nicer way to soften your certainty and never be too sure anyway. The great Gary Halbert said, don't be too sure, don't be too sure, don't be too sure. And he said it three times for a reason. It's to help you remember that certainty, even if you are certain, you know, I don't know, maybe the Mandela effect is real. And then you go and you think, oh, I was looking for George Orwell's 1984, and it turns out it's actually 1985, right? <laughs> it could happen. I don't know. Uh, speaking of the Mandela effect, thanks for the, the people who came and talked uh, in the discussion there. There's some strange woo-woo uh, responses there. Uh, and I'm a little bit shocked and amazed by the conversation that has emerged there. Uh, but nonetheless, we have to be modest and say, hey, maybe they are right. Who knows? Um, but every time I get ringing in my ears, I think of tinnitus first, not uh, the Mandela effect. All right. Then I think about the Mandela effect. Uh, Month says, when he woke up from his lucid dream, he went into sleep paralysis. Yeah, I like sleep paralysis. It's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, but hopefully it was uh, fun for you as well. J.A. is cleaning the house. Good night. Good morning. Well, good night to you as well, J.A. Thanks. Good to see you again after all this time. Always love seeing people active again. And by the way, if you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking, and where you are in the world. All right, so this is uh, another set of ways that you can use this. And then, of course, a little-known use of the major is for vocabulary and language learning, right? So learning a word in Sanskrit, for example, why invent new imagery when if something has a man sound, you just use Johnny Cash, right, in that image. And there's a lot. It's very, very simple. Why come up with something new when, you know, when you come up with... Uh, uh, you know, chitam or something like that, well, you can just look at ch and you can look at t and then you can look at m and just go to your major and your 00 to 99 and think, oh, I could use those things, right? So Chet uh, from the Hardy Boys is not just Chet from the Hardy Boys. He's also a number. It's so powerful. And then that goes into language learning. Likewise with um, with Chinese, so if you're learning Chinese and then you can use, or any language with tones, you can number those tones. Often they are numbered, but not always. And then you have images to go with those things. So this is a powerful, powerful application, but you need your major working for you 
in order to do it. You don't need a 00 to 99 in order to do it, but it's useful and helpful to be able to do so. And so in Chinese, for example, 3, 4 instantly have an image, right? If the, the first tone is a 3, then you have an image. Or if it's 3 and 4, you have an image. But it's all, you also have an image if it's 3 and 2 for some reason. If it's 3 and 1, you have an image. It's just so wonderful, so powerful. Um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, do it. It helps. It helps with your language learning. Also, you can do daily drills, right? This is a huge, wonderful application for brain exercise, for memory exercise, for really getting familiar with these techniques. So you can go and memorize prices as you're shopping. Just go. I think there's a Ron White video where he's just memorizing the prices as he goes through the store. Really fun to watch that. And uh, you could just do that every day and come up with the sum, the total. You can do game scores. While you're playing games, you could just simply look at your final score, Tetris or whatever, and go, oh, wow, that was my score. Just quickly encode it. It's just a daily little drill to use your memory. You can um, have a numbered deck that you work with. So something like this, and you just you know shuffle through and start to memorize a couple of things as a daily drill. Very, very powerful. You can also do word counting. So for example, the number of letters in the word word is, let's see, W-O-R-D, four, right? And the number of letters in the word counting, C-O, or one, C-O-U-N-T-I-N-G. So eight. Now, how are you going to memorize that? Well, you could just use your major. Simple, right? So that would be the rover from Member the Prisoner with Patrick McGowan. Boom, 48. And then your mind, this is where you start to get used to dealing with paradoxes, inconsistencies, and so forth. Um, you can think, okay, so word counting was 4 and 8, but I'm using my image for 48, and you divide it, right? It's just neat. But you could also do 0, 4, and 0, 8, whatever your images are for those. You could also do your number image thing, like a sailboat and a snowman. You could do your number rhyme thing, so you could have a door and a, a gate. You could do all kinds of things, right? You could use all your systems at the same time and run through them. You could have all your systems, if you have a proper memory palace network, you could use all of them for just one number as a daily drill. And it's just so much fun to just tick, 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 tick through all of them. And you could do this all day long because there are numbers all over the place. Um, very, very powerful. So checking in with our chat, Reclaiming Life says, I had never tried converting words. In, I'm learning in other languages to numbers as a way of learning them and remembering them. I really like the idea. Excellent. Yes, please do. And let me know how that you find it. You could do it with names too, right? So there's all kinds of endless applications. It's really, really powerful. Chrome when walking is in the house. Good to see you. It's been a while. Uh, really enjoyed your uh, very, very brief um, video from the other day. Congratulations on that. Sounds like it was very, very exciting. If you guys aren't following Crone Woman Walking's YouTube channel, get connected, follow up with her, get subscribed. She has great stuff. Sometimes, actually more often than not, about memory and her memory journey. And I absolutely love following that. So good to see you, Crone Woman Walking, as always. Wonderful, wonderful. How are you doing? Um, how was your trip, etc.? And I, I want to hear more about what you posted about recently, which hopefully people will check out. Um, so word counting is kind of cool. Simple little brain exercise drill. And you know, if you're having problems focusing while you're reading, one little thing to just center yourself, is just count how many letters are in certain words, make your little images and you start to focus. Give it a try. If you zone out and zone off and so forth, very, very powerful. Uh, Chiss and Bop you can do, not going to cover Chiss and Bop today, but uh, it's a wonderful little thing. And you can do some Chiss and Bop and then memorize what it is that you uh, calculated. Um, Chiss and Bop is covered in the Brain Exercise Boot Camp. You can do a matching game. So for example, let's say you made yourself two of these. So, and you laid them out. So you got two cards with 96. You can lay them out and you can encode where you found the first 96 so that when you find the second, boom, you know where it is. And you've now turned this array into a kind of impromptu memory palace and uh, you play a matching game like that. Super fun uh, and great for your memory. Great memory exercise, great spatial memory exercise that teaches you more about memory palaces and lets you practice using your numbers. Um, Another kind of uh, application, well, we'll check in with the next one once I get in with the chat here. Reclaiming Life recommends polyhedral dice, those commonly used in tabletop, tabletop role-playing dice. 
are a great way to get random numbers to practice with. Excellent suggestion. Thank you for that. Yeah, dice are amazing. I don't normally recommend the apps, but I'm sure you can get dice apps. And I remember Lars, one of my trainers that I had in Berlin, he would uh, shake this app and boom, the dice would show how many push-ups I needed to do that day, etc. James says, sounds like the game concentration. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, there's so many things to do. It's so much fun. Also, for those of you who are in magic, I mentioned it already today, you can do magic tricks. So Memorandum has some cool things. The Tamarese stack, you can learn Sai Stebbins. You can use it in mentalism a lot. Mentalism is one of the first places I encountered memorizing numbers and memory techniques, period. And so, uh, what is it? 13 Steps to Mentalism, Tony Corinda. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff in there. And uh, really, really important. So a little tip for the magicians out there. Uh, it's another way to use the major system. And there's so much good stuff. Um, what's his name? Richard Osterland. He's got cool mentalism stuff that he does that. They're, they're not necessarily using the major but you could use the major for that. And uh, really, really elegant, simple, so much fun. It blows people away when you do these kinds of stunts. Um, and so it's just look into this sometime in your life. Very, very powerful. Uh, you can apply this to, to personal info. So for example, banking info, family dates, phone numbers, and then again, prospective memory. So your personal appointments and then granular goals that you have and milestones. So one of the things that you can do is, you know, memorize what, uh, what you did at the gym, how much you, how much weight you did, how many sets, etc., how many, uh, reps inside of those sets and think about your goals. So I don't know, whatever, whatever it is you do, you can, figure out what are the numbers in there, prospectively memorize them, memorize the date by which that you're going to accomplish those goals, and then memorize the milestones along the way. Great application of these techniques. So Reclaiming Life agrees that mentalism is so much fun. It is indeed, it is indeed, it's so much fun. All right, so let me know in the chat if you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up and let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. If you're interested in mastering the major, I think we're Got a lot of people here who already know it. Go to magneticmarymethod.com forward slash MSM. Magneticmarymethod.com forward slash MSM. Putting that link in the chat for you there. And um, might not be showing up on the YouTube or on the Facebook configuration, but I'll go and post it on over there after if you want to join this 12-day course that will walk you through each and every part of the major. So literally, you get a lesson on how you're going to remember that zero is a soft C, S, or Z. I know a lot of people struggle with this, and so I wanted to solve that. I want to make it that anybody can do this. So over 12 days, now you might be thinking, well, there aren't, aren't 12 numbers here. Well, we got other things to do, right? we got to make this a success for you. So if you would like simple ways to do this, make sure you get that course. And we'll go through zero, we'll go through one, we'll go through two, we'll go through three, we'll go through four and five and six and seven, eight and nine, and a few other matters that you absolutely need and you won't regret it as uh andy told us it's the limitless pill and he was able to do a hundred numbers in about two hours at his, really his first go if, if i understand correctly and uh he just said he's been loving the program and i can tell you really know your stuff there's wisdom in the simplicity of your answers and your cognitive overload avoidance strategies i can tell you You've put great effort into making the courses. He's talking about the full masterclass, but nonetheless, you can learn the numbers part with this very special promotion this month, which it's Remembrance Day for uh, us here in Australia today and wanted to um, do something special for that. And also, it was 2014 when I first released that book and it uh, did so well for many, many years and wanted to revive it, make an enhanced edition for you. Um, and Andy here says, I really wish I knew about you and your system years ago. Do you know how much easier school would have been? How many more names I would have remembered? How many people would have been impressed by my knowledge uh, on various subjects on pers or personal interests? How many more interesting points and conversations I could have shared at social gatherings from books or anything else I had learned and actually remembered? I can go on forever. It's like taking the limitless pill, but no pill required. 
But frankly, if someone, if you're someone reading this and debating whether or not you should invest in this, ask yourself this question. Can I really afford to not have these skill sets? And here's the thing. A lot of people, they just scrape by, you know, and they can't afford that. That's a life lived at less than your full potential. And the beauty of getting into memory training and sticking with it and being active and engaged in this community is it gets better and better and better the more you practice. And there is no ceiling. It truly is the limitless pill. And the only catch is that no one can do it for you, but we can certainly encourage each other. And as we've seen today, there are many people in the chat who have these skills already and reclaiming life. Mentalism is so much fun. Danny agrees, reclaiming life, it sure is. Well. Whether you're doing quote unquote mentalism or not, this is magic. This is the most profound mystery that you will ever solve for yourself. The mystery of why can't I remember more? Why can't I just remember simple phone numbers? Why can't why don't I know my credit card number? Why do I not know this access number, etc., for this, that, or the other thing? If you want to memorize passwords, well, that's there. If you want to memorize equations, you can get it done. And it really is the limitless pill because this could be the doorway that enters you into a life of using your mind at the highest possible level and continuing to grow as an individual. Because as I hope to have shown you today, this applies to language learning. This applies to philosophy. This applies to being that person who gets a raise and so forth. And, you know, whatever age you are, young or old, you can do like Marno here, 1,200 digits. If you haven't heard that podcast, the link is in the description for you. Go and listen to this. It's just amazing. He was doing rote learning. Then he gets the magnetic Mary method and he boosts himself up to 1,200 digits. And you can hear him recite all of this. He does it so fast. 1,200 digits. Amazing. Amazing. And um, this is with Pi. And, you know, we've got another um, a great Pi story that I'll share with you in a minute. But I always think, too, about the people who really just want to get ahead of in life. And I always think of Jesse Villalobos, who got this incredible raise uh, and promotion and it's just from knowing how to memorize product numbers and the names of products and so forth and being the go-to guy who knows the stuff at work and uh, it's really really powerful and wonderful to do so you know if you've ever struggled with this make sure you're getting this enhanced ebook during this week uh, the 13th it, it ends and you'll get Major System Mastery, which later will be available only on its own, but for now is coming with the enhanced edition and um, the, of this ebook. And this is just a very, very simple book that will help you. But because, you know, books are books and not courses, that's why I've added the Major System Mastery, just to make this uh, something that's in engaging, interactive, supplements the book kind of like you would do in a university course, right? You get a textbook, right? And then you, you get a follow-up set of lectures. And these are very simple lectures that just walk you through, how are you gonna memorize zero? How are you gonna memorize that one is T and D or D and T? What are you gonna do with that? Give you some little assignments along the way and some examples, example-based assignments, and really make this fun and engaging for everybody who wants this. And you know, if you're thinking, well, I'm an older person, I'm not gonna be able to do this, etc. Well. Let me introduce you to Paul Deary. And before I introduce you to Paul Deary, remember too that James Gerwing, Magnetic Memory Method student, won the 2019 Canadian Memory Championships as a, after he retired from his profession. So this doesn't have anything to do with age. It doesn't have anything to do with other, anything other than you learning these simple skills and making it simple for yourself. And if I can do anything to make it simpler, let me know because I want to make it as simple as possible because it is simple. But I also am sensitive to the fact that it can seem like more work than it is. And, you know, when I, um, when I go through Bruno First's work, you can remember by Dr. Bruno First. Anybody see anything in these two names? <laughs> I sure do, um, even in the word doctor. Um, even he, he had the challenge of making it super simple for people. Um, and one of the things that we might do, actually, there's no, there is, I, I've looked at them all that I've seen. People send them to me. Uh, David earlier today, I think it was, if I scroll. I don't know about MST, David, but I've never seen anything that's nearly as robust and profound and as powerful as the Bruno First number dictionary. And this is so amazing. Um, so we might go through this together, uh, but I don't know yet. In any case, 
you'll be notified if you have this program, uh, if we are going to do that or not. Um, so SDFG, SDFG just signed up for MSM, Major System Mastery, because I need a better plan to 99. Great, great. Wonderful. Thank you for that. SDFG, wonderful. David says, Amen. I couldn't go to the store for five items without a written list a year ago. Now I remember names and hundreds of Arabic words. I'm completely amazed and it keeps getting better. Thanks for sharing that, David. Excellent. So glad to hear of your results. But uh, one of the things I want to share is a video with Paul Deary reciting 100 digits of pi. So you can see just how fun this is. Uh, and we'll play that in a second. But SDFG says, wow, I just realized that my dad had that on the bookshelf. Amazing. So, you know, one of the reasons why you might want to study these skills from a guy like me is because I actually do the work. I read through the tradition and I pick out, ooh, that's interesting. And see how we can build it in. So the ma what makes the magnetic Mary method magnetic? Well, there's a lot of things, but one of the things that makes it magnetic is I'm constantly vacuuming through the tradition, finding out every detail that I possibly can to make it even more magnetic for y'all. And um, of course, I do this work and need your support in doing it because that's what enables me to do this. We're building our tenure for old Dr. Metivier because he has no university, so he's built one. And it's called the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass. And of course, we need to, to fund that. So that's one of the reasons why we do these specials and so forth. And always your support is appreciated. But this isn't this nonsense, la-di-da, crowdfunding sort of thing. If you're going to support it, you should get something in return. And maybe it's a little bit of repetition from, from, for some of you, but repetition is the mother of memory. So if you're interested, make sure you go to magneticmarymethod.com forward slash MSN for major system mastery and uh, do it for the strength of repeating things, seeing it from a different angle, participating because there's an opportunity to participate in as part of this course. And uh, you'll learn so much more by actively engaging with other people and there's nothing that there's there's almost nothing that replaces the most powerful memory strategy on the planet, which is to teach what you're learning, and to engage with other learners. We see this in the martial arts all the time. The students are the teachers, and the teachers are the students. And there's a perfect circle there, and that's how you get real growth: is that you teach what you're learning as soon as you've learned it. So SDFG agrees, says yes. You do the deeds. Implementers are pure gold, absolutely. And we need more of them. We can get more of them if we band together. And we continue to help this grow and make it exactly what it can be, which is the mnemonics renaissance in perpetuity and in, in, in that it just grows itself because so many people are using these techniques, getting great results and saying, hallelujah, I have seen the promised land and memory techniques got me there. And there's so many stories, so many stories, so much success and I'd like to take a little bit of a breather here and share with you Paul's success story on video, the magic of Memorex. So I'll be back in a minute and check this out because this is really, really amazing. And while you're listening to him recite Pi, MSM, magneticmarymethod.com forward slash MSM. Make sure you're joining us because there are 12 days of absolute glory coming to you where you will be walked through each and every digit from zero to nine. With my own magnetic imagery, I guarantee you that there's at least a couple of magnetic mnemonic examples you would never have dreamed of thinking about. Some of them are a, maybe a bit illegal, but not in a bad way. <laughs> and you'll absolutely enjoy every, every, uh, every day of the 12 days that you're part of this course. That's at magneticmarymethod.com forward slash MSM. And let's have a little looky-loo, shan't we, at old Paul. Uh, and I don't mean old Paul in the sense of, of age, but, you know, our, our good old pal, Paul Deary, who um, just amazed me when I saw this video. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And by the way, Paul, I got to I gotta follow up with him because he was starting to do some graduate research in memory, which I'm looking forward to. And yeah, you can watch this and consume it all that you like. But as SDFG says, you get the promised land by walking around it, not just being on the mountain looking around and that's exactly right you get it by doing which is our doc principle right doing is the origin of confidence doing is the origin of courage 
doing is the origin of the clarity and the creativity that you need and the consistency and ultimately control over the strength of your memory, the strength of your mind and the control over your daily schedule so that you actually do get out and just get a simple set of index cards and draw out some numbers and start to practice on a daily basis. Because if you don't, you're not only not going to be on the mountain, you're not going to have any hope in doing any of the memory reserve development that will protect your brain against dementia, Alzheimer's, etc. And the evil doctor forget, he's waiting for you. And if you don't turn the heat on and melt this guy, he will get you. And he, he might get you anyway. There's no promise in life. And I'm always practicing my memory and my brain because I secretly have a fear that he's going to get me in the end. And he just might, no matter what I do. But I'm going to be happy in this present moment knowing that I did all that I could in the battle against the evil Dr. Forget and lived such a life that even if I become an obnoxious pain because I can't remember anything, I'm going to uh, at least have the peace of mind now that I did all that I could to be the best possible person in each and every moment that I could be. And this is very, very central and important to your success and your happiness is that you're, you are striving, you're taking on the challenges, you are doing what it takes. So I highly encourage you to get this. And it's just very simple. The, the link is in the chat multiple times now. It's in the discussion below. And you will get not only this book, but you'll get a 12-day course that follows up on the book. There's a couple other little bonuses there for you, so don't miss it. And um, yeah, you're right, SDFG. We need those on swag. We need to develop some more magnetic memory method swag. Everybody, I think, has already gotten what we got there. Um, and if you haven't, it's another way to support the program is to get some swag. And uh, it reminds you, really, to use the magnetic memory method to have that cup and to have a, a t-shirt or a sweater, etc. And we may do the major system on a t-shirt. That would be kind of cool. Um, if anybody has graphic skills and can design one for us, please let me know. That'd be amazing. Uh, Reclaiming Life says, speaking of the mnemonics renaissance, it is great that Netflix put up the memory games documentary to help introduce even more people to memory related skills. That is excellent indeed. I'm curious though, you know, what your feelings are on Netflix, which I think is even, uh, less transparent, shall we say, than, uh, some other platforms, <laughs> not to put you on the spot, but. Uh, and not to not to suggest for a second that the world is free from contradictions, but if there was a criminal investigation waiting to happen, it would be Netflix. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break here. Let me introduce you to Paul, and let's watch him recite Pi. And hopefully that whets the wheels for your interest. If you haven't already jumped in and gotten your seat at the table of Major System Mastery, rock and roll, Paul. Three eight four six two six four three three eight three two seven nine five zero two eight eight four one nine seven one six nine three nine nine three seven five. Hi, my name is Paul and I've taken a few courses by Anthony Mativier, but I felt that the experience of doing it today live was the biggest advantage. Anthony has a gift in simplifying complex concepts, and I feel that I've really come away today with practical skills that I can now use effectively. Um, it was great to immerse ourselves in the situation to be able to apply the time, because when we're at home, we may not take the time to do the memory exercises that we were doing today. I felt particularly that the thing that we did at the end of today was something that is totally unique in memory training, which is three days of memory, which is how to practice your skills. Um, I've read many memory books and I've never come across a system laid out as to how to practice what you've learned. And this is what I gained today from Anthony's course. So I, I give a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Thank you. Five, three, four, two. One one seven zero <laughs> six seven nine. <laughs> Too easy. 
All right, everybody. So um, before we close today, I wanted to let you know about this book, Memory Wise. Um, very, very interesting by Dr. Ann Ungenstein. And um, I'll talk about that a little bit. And then this book, Left to Their Own Devices. Ooh, weird how that um, comes out. But uh, Julie Albright here. Very, very interesting book. Uh, and so one of the things that uh, is a great... Uh, a great gift is that new memory books keep coming out all the time. And some books are memory books that don't seem like they're memory books on, on the surface, uh, such as left to their own devices here. But um, one thing that you might want to do is just support this author because even though this is not heavy on mnemonics, um, it is about how memory works and what to do when it doesn't. And there's some really good ideas in here. And uh, we'll probably do a more of a deep dive into it. But this was a, an afternoon read. I probably read it in an hour and a half or something like that. It's, um, it's, it's relatively thick, but the way it's laid out, it's a, it's a, it's a very quick read. And some good ideas, uh, some ideas I hadn't encountered before, actually. So um, highly recommend that, giving that a shout out. And probably, if you're interested, you can, well, I, I'm probably going to do it even if you're not interested. But you should be interested because this is a good book and support this author's work get it, get your library to order it, et cetera, et cetera. And then in terms of um, left to their own devices, I'm not done this yet, but uh, what's so great about it is it's talking about some of the deeper reasons why we might be having some of the issues that we're having in terms of generational changes. And so I think that there, you know, are some some issues in some of the argumentation so far, but I haven't finished the book. But nonetheless, uh, it's from a sociological perspective that I think is very, very good to, to know more about. And I haven't, I, I haven't got much more to say about it than that other than to let you know that this is a book you might want to be checking out um, if you're interested in th the problems of digital amnesia and so forth. Because uh, we are we are not even close to seeing what the consequences of the internet uh, are going to bring. And there's, there's a untethering that the internet has brought. That's very, very uh, interesting. And so, um, yeah, you might want to, even though we don't know the future and we're poor predictors of the future, you might want to look more at the deeper historical trends and the more recent historical trends that um, are shaping how things are proceeding along and maybe be a bit of a, ahead of the curve, even if you can't totally predict what's going on. All right. Reclaiming Life says, I don't support Netflix financially and they don't have much of personal data about me since it is my sister's account and the whole family uses it. I do find their analytics quite scary, as one person had mentioned when Bandersnatch came out, that Netflix itself is the plot for Black Mirror, which they produce. Right, right. So, I mean, again, I think I've already said why I think that's an alarming contradiction in the recommendation, but nonetheless, uh, it is good that such a documentary called Memory Games exists. And back to JA's uh, concerns earlier, we must do with we must deal with the world as it is, if we hope for it to be anything like what we want it to be, and um, let go of the outcome because it will most certainly remain <laughs> what it is. Um, and since you're here, an announcement as such of sorts. I'm still thinking through the next iteration of the Mastermind. And what I'm thinking of doing is making it so that we can have two sessions a month for two different time zones. And so mulling that over, pondering that over, and um, hopefully there'll be an announcement soon about how that's going to work. And uh, it will be either with the same technology or with something like what you've suggested with Zoom and so forth. Um, but it will carry on. Uh, and again, a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a breather. Um, okay. So numbers, major system, very, very simple. Zero, soft S or soft C, S, Z, one D or T, two is an N, three is an M, four is an R, five is an L, six is a Ch, Sh, J, you could use the soft G if you want. Seven is a K, can be a hard G if you want. Eight is an F or V, nine is a B or P couldn't be any simpler, but it's not so simple for everybody under the sun. So that's why we made major system mastery 
I'd be absolutely delighted if you check it out and if you join us. And um, that uh, that is something that you may enjoy. All right, Reclaiming Life says, the documentary is available off of Netflix as well. It's not a Netflix original. And I think it's just great that more people can access it now. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, I have seen uh, Bandersnatch. Uh, and I didn't know the documentary was available off of Netflix, but that's cool. But in terms of of uh, Bandersnatch, one thing that's that's very interesting, and I've written about this for years, and this is maybe a good opportunity to mention it, even though I don't have any slides for it. The Genre Frameworks course, which is one of my film studies courses, is now officially available. And I released my analysis of Joker on my other channel. And that other channel recently got a, a, cracked the thousand subscriber mark, even though it's mostly things that I think the critics have kind of missed the ball on there. Uh, some of them touch on it and so forth. I'm going to do more analysis uh, of cinema coming up. I don't know how consistently I will do it, but the the actual course is, is available. And one of the, the things about film studies is it's very good for your memory. And when we think about Bandersnatch and how it's kind of exposing the dark mirror, the black mirror at both conscious, subconscious, unconscious levels, the the crimes against the status quo or the criminality of the status quo. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking, how you're feeling. Do you have a major system? And let's jam a little bit on this topic. Uh, so, you know, we're not, we're going to talk about memory now in a abstract sense, but one of the things that, did I publish this? I don't know if it's published or not. I don't think so. But one of the things that I did uh, in my academic career was to expose, so to speak, the latent unconscious anxiety going on in movies like The Matrix and the first Spider-Man uh, with Tobey Maguire, is it? And um, how that those movies are exposing our anxieties of how they are made. So, for example, the production of, of um, getting those characters into the computer, for example, where they put little knobs all over their bodies. Well, what is the Matrix about other than people with little knobs all over their bodies, right? And they're being penetrated at deeper and deeper integral levels at a bodily, uh, in a bodily sense that is very personal and consumes them. And the matrix is so much about food, so much about humans being eaten and how we eat each other. And then here comes this tech, like the movie literally uses the technologies that it's talking about at a, in a very real and integral way. So if you look at how bullet time operates and how some of the pre-visualization uh, that they did operate, very, very much similar sort of issue. Uh, and you see this sort of anxiety. It's not so much food related, but it is productive related in terms of this one scene where, you know, he's just like, and so we won't mention certain words there, but... It's very, very interesting how that it all plays out. So there's a lot of anxieties being expressed, not just about what the story is about, but the actual means by which the stories produce their own effects. And this is something that we see in Bandersnatch as well. It's, it's a social commentary with critical power about how the very production of the story is the fear that we're, we're, we're experiencing and how it is eating us, essentially. So th there can be zombie movies that have no zombies, for example. And in many ways, The Matrix is a zombie movie. And um, you can think that through. Uh, and maybe I can find that old article for anybody who's interested. I don't think so, though. It's probably lost in the ma mists of time. I didn't, I didn't do a good job of saving all my scholarly uh, productions. But it might have been published. Uh, I think actually it was now that I dig through the, the mists of time. Uh, yes, I presented it at the University of Western Ontario at some point, and I'm pretty sure that they published it. I remember somebody did a review of my presentation anyway, but um, sometimes academic journals are short-lived. All right, so that's uh, something to consider, and I 
also had published uh, something on cryptomnesia and how some of the war propaganda that came out after 9-11 exposed some of these similar anxieties and how they show up in the production of the movies as well. So we looked at I Am Legend, we looked at the first Transformers movie and so forth in that article. And that's in a book. So interesting, interesting. Uh, fun memories. Thanks for raising that, Reclaiming Life. I always uh, enjoy a little deep dive into memories. All right, so back to the major system. The, the thing to understand is even there, you can remember so much. If you were going to university and you were going to do some film analysis or whatever, there's so much to be memorized because every character in every movie can be translated into a number. So you remember their names and you remember names of actors and directors and so forth. And you might not be able to recall every single last one of them all the time and something might come to you a little bit later, etc. But you're going to uh, have so much more success in your studies and your ability to remember back to things that uh, are, are decades old sometimes because you've done this. And if you look back in our chat today, you've seen some people speaking about that, uh, which is absolutely wonderful. Uh, and there's just so many applications for these techniques. We talked about a lot of them today. Had an absolute blast, as always, on these live streams. I would love to hear from you what you would like to see on future live streams. For example, if you'd like more of a deep dive into memory-wise, make sure that I hear that loud and clear. I might do it anyway, but I'm much more likely to do it if, uh, if we see that there's interest. And if not, well, then, then not. Um, I still want to do whoops, an analysis of You Can Remember by Dr. Bruno first. So let me know if you're interested in going deep into all of these wonderful memory modules. Can we get any uh, response to that right now? I'll be very, very interested to see if so. And if not, well, then not. All right, everybody. As we wind down, thank you so much for being here today. Make sure if you're interested to get the Major System Mastery mini course at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash MSM, you will get this uh, enhanced ebook sent to you, How to Learn and Memorize Math, Numbers, Equations, and Simple Arithmetic, along with a 12-day course that takes you through the Major System so that you know that zero is a soft C, S, or Z, or Z, and you know it with great certainty. You know that one is a D or T, you know that two is an N, you know that three is an M, you know that four is an R, that five is an L, six is a CH, SH, J, or soft G sound. You know that seven can be a K or a hard G if you like. You know that eight is an F or V and nine is a B or P. And what use is that to you? Well, very simple. Whenever you see numbers, you can instantly memorize them because if you have an 11, you know that D and T must apply here so you can see a toad. For example, if you have a 24, well, N and R, so, uh, you know, you do two, oh, well, what, what word are we going to have for that? You can create a word or you can follow some of the suggestions that we'll have for you. But at the end of the day, what you're going to do is, um, is uh, have an amazing, amazing ability to memorize any numbers. Sorry, SDFG, did I say that wrong as I was rattling through this? Nine is B and P, uh, indeed, seven, or eight is F and B. Um, I might have mis said that wrong. Sorry if I did. <laughs> That's not great. But uh, what we do is we correct. And some of the times you will make little mistakes like that. Um, oh, SDFG said no. I'm not sure if I made a mistake on that or not. But if I did, one of the cool things about the magnetic memory method is that you're able to recover, take your mistakes for what they are, apologize, and move on. Why? Because you're relaxed. The Magnetic memory method is all about relax, 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 be calm, be cool. All right, so <laughs> SDFG says, no, I didn't. It was just my do it is make sure that your memory palaces have numbers at some point in your life. And without this training, you know, you might never get there. So we want to make sure that you get there and do it using the magnetic memory method. That stamp didn't work so well. We made a mistake with that one, but look, the second time we got it. And you'll find in life that oftentimes the second time you'll get it, but you'll be aided by the initial mistake. And if you don't make mistakes, you don't grow. 
and the way I make it work. And it wouldn't be possible without the major system to, uh, to make that work. And uh, it's just so amazing and wonderful how it works to be able to just go through your words that you're trying to learn and be able to memorize those tones. And you might never learn Chinese, but Mandarin and uh, to some extent Cantonese are becoming some of the most important languages. And, you know, it's good brain exercise just to learn a little bit of it anyway, right? And when you can just simply make some fun images on, on in your mind or put them on a card if you like, you're not going to miss out on these opportunities. You're going to have what's called memory reserve. And your neural networks will literally be stronger. And you don't have to take my word for it because... This is uh, Dr. Ann Unkenstein here is a very, very well-established scientist of, of memory and medical professional, if I understand here, um, clinical neuropsychologist, and uh, with 25 years of experience. So you don't have to take my word for it. Your neural networks will strengthen, and they will be so much more robust and profound. And even though we can't exactly promise that you're not going to get dementia or Alzheimer's, and I might get it too. I, I constantly worry about this. My mom had early onset dementia that was turned around, uh, which is wonderful and a miracle. But if you don't invest in training your memory and use the, some of the things that we talked about today, well, we just hope the best for you. But you should at least make a fighting chance. And so there's lots and lots of new details emerging all the time. And um, just get as much information as you can and then take action on that information because as uh, SDFG pointed out today, you get the promised land by walking around in it. And you're already in the promised land to a certain extent, but you might not be seeing it. All right, everybody, thanks so much for a wonderful session today. Make sure that you get this opportunity this week before time runs out at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash MSM. And I appreciate each and every one of you for being here today, especially those active in the chat and who support this teaching and more than support it, actually go out and use this information to learn and remember what it is that's going to get you ahead in life and just enjoy the improvement that it makes for you so that you can move forward and get the best out of that brain of yours that is just waiting for exercise. It's waiting for wonderful attention on a daily basis, just picking up some information and memorizing it. So simple, so easy, so fun. And the best part is, is it helps keep the evil Dr. Forget at bay. And another thing I want to say is uh, congratulations to... Uh, um, sorry, i got to get a drink here. My throat is running out. Mmm. Water. Absolutely love water. Congratulations to Christian Fitzharris. So we released an interview with him uh, approximately a year ago on his birthday, and it was his birthday again recently, and whatever. Congratulations for the other thing. And um, let's close out today's session with a little bit of fun with Christian Fitzharris and the Brain Games theme song. Thanks, everybody. Until we have a chance to speak again, come visit me at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash MSM and keep yourself magnetic. Bye-bye. Brain games. Brain games. Let the games begin! I define, establish, exercise, and practice. Externalize spatial maps as I attack the path of mature learner. Bottle burner, max memory reserve in earnest. I'm a furnace, an anomaly. Sibling, Sibling of Simonides known to reduce cognitive load. And oh, how I rotate, juggling space, making a case for brain games. So digital amnesia leaves you digital dementia is censured. Did y'all tag uranium on your mind wall? Review, recall, we will evolve. Brain games, synapses flash in my palace, crashing with brain games. Info encoded, mental high roller. Brain games, synapses flash in my palace, crashing with the brain games. Info encoded, mental high roller. This is not a game you can afford to lose. <gasps> Why? 
Brain games, don't need an app for that I just attack with the path of a lab rat I mean scientist, I'm an annihilist Finalist, illuminist, numinist Doing this, proving this, who is this scholar? Dopamine fiend, clean sheen like the Pleiades Enemies, ill at ease, killing with abilities Rolling with affinity, rolling with McKinney Brain games, healthy snacks Build a palace, pick some facts Learn to balance while you rap Unleash talents, don't look back Brain games, synapses flashing Mind palace crashing with the brain games Info encoded, mental high roller Brain game, synapses flashing, my palace crashing with the brain game. Info encoded, mental high roller.